Welcome to Glenn and Friends, a true crime podcast where a shrink, a high priest, and a thespian get together to talk about crime. In March and April of 2016, the city of Lusaka, Zambia, in the heart of Africa, lived in terror. There were whispers of a serial killer, or potentially killers, that were going around in the night and brutally murdering people in ritual killings. The terror of those nights led to seven people being killed, witch hunts, and eventually the finding of four murderers. Saucy! Damn! Yeah. I just took a swig of my milkshake. That was not a good time. (laughs) (laughs) Super saucy. Well, welcome to Glenn and Friends. I believe this is episode five. Yes, So this is the kickoff of our second part of season one. So we are over halfway done with season one, guys. Heck. That's amazing. That's amazing. So thank you so much for listening along with us as we have been doing this podcast. It has been really fun for us to do this podcast, talk about these cases, research these cases. And a lot of them have been ones that have been close to home, uh, stories that are close to home. And earlier in the season, the cats are, the leps are having a great time partying around. Stampeding everywhere. It's fine. It's fine. So you may hear cats every once in a while, but that's that's just it's part of the. If you don't immersion. like the lips, it's the immersion. My immersion. It's the immersion of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going wild tonight. All right. Well, and that's crazy because it's perfect because this case is wild. But yeah, so this case covers is a case from Africa. So I grew up. Uh, me being Alyssa, the. Um, the high priest, if you will. Yes, yes. Uh, I grew up in Lusaka, Zambia. My parents were missionaries there, and so I moved there in 2002 and moved back to the States in 2017. So I lived there for the large majority of my life so far. Um, So I was there in 2016 when these cases were happening, and I remember hearing about them quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So... Are we ready to get into it? Well, yep. Um, Fill that tea. Am is. I ready? <laughs> Fill that sweet Zambian tea. Sweet Zambian tea. Zambia actually does have really good tea. How do how do I? How do and I? We're a British colony. How do I? <laughs> so, you know, tea be popping. It really do. Be. All right. Yes. So words. In March of 2016, I remember hearing stories of a body being found brutally murdered and mutilated yeah. in Ngombe compound, which a compound. <clears throat> is like a neighborhood where it's an unplanned neighborhood. So it's a neighborhood with very small houses all huddled together, and so it's not exactly the best of area. You definitely don't want to go hanging out there at night. Uh, but Ngombe Compound was about ten minutes, a 10-minute drive from my house, and it was a compound that I was very familiar with because we had to go through there every single day we went to high school because our high school was... Um, right near there so I was really familiar with this area so that was obviously really scary to hear about a case Mm -hmm. like this Mm -hmm. so um, I didn't know then that that would be the first of a series of murders that honestly put the entire city on very high alert and there have been at least seven confirmed slayings tied to these killings Mm -hmm. and this became honestly like a nightcrawler type situation in lusaka so nightcrawler being the murderer in the 80s in california which just totally overtook it and there's several examples of this with ted bundy and several murderers that put cities or geographical areas on high alert and this was one that did that for Lusaka. And honestly, there were there was a lot of press coverage of these murders because we had never really seen anything like this mm-hmm. in Lusaka. We, oh, really? We've never had a serial killer. <clears throat> you know what I mean? So this was the stuff of movies and TV. That's mm. freaky. So it was it, we'd just never seen crime like this, especially crime that was really brutal and like mutilating, not just like someone's dead. This is this is really brutal crime. So there were. Um, There was press coverage, there were curfews put in place, police press conferences informing citizens to not be out late or talking, or, you know, they told people to not talk to strangers. I remember my parents were like, you can't be out past this time, and, you know... Like, uh, if the streetlights are on situation, like, you better be home. Exactly. So, it was, it was, everyone was on high alert because of this, and I remember mainly hearing about it from my friends, um, 
and <coughs> we were just like in shock that this was happening. So obviously this idea of like a curfew and different things of like, hey, don't talk to strangers and blah, blah, blah. This was helpful to a lot of people. So this was something like, okay, yeah, for most people that would work. But the problem was the people being targeted in these crimes were homeless people. Oh. So this information was not helpful at all because they to didn't the hear homeless it. community. Yeah, they weren't hearing it. Mm. They didn't have any other options. Like, they don't really like, like they can't go home. Yeah, they at don't night. have a home at night. So this was really targeting them. And so, without further ado, let's get into the details of mm-hmm. what this crime looked like. So the murders themselves were believed to be ritualistic. So when I first heard about the crimes, we (coughs) were told that it was witchcraft crimes because Mm. that is very real in Africa. There are witch doctors and things like that. So that's what we were told. Yeah, basically. (laughs) So (laughs) not very happy sounding. (laughs) So the murders themselves, they were believed to be ritualistic. There was a pattern to them, and whoever committed them knew exactly what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And actually, the thing that alerted the police to one of the suspects is the way that the uh, certain things were done to the bodies, it looked like an expert was doing them. Oh. Like someone who had medical experience. So we'll get to that later. Oh, I so don't like it. <laughs> most of the victims were male, and their ears, hearts, and genitals were missing when the bodies were found. Mm, love to see it. So their hearts were removed, their ears were cut off, and their genitals were cut off. Every body was usually <laughs> discarded by a roadway or in a ditch beside a road. In Zambia, we have deep ditches that are about sometimes can be as deep as six feet oh uh, because of whole man cow. yeah because of how much rain we get because we get like monsoon rain during the rainy season because mm. we have basically only two seasons six months of dry six months of rain so when the rain is really bad we need these huge ditches to put the water somewhere sure, sure. to get them off the roads mm-hmm. so the body would usually be found completely naked potentially in one of these ditches or by a roadway sometimes by a bar or something like that mm. and um this was a statement on the manner of the crimes given by a police spokeswoman. She said all the murderers, which the accused, she's talking about the people that they ended up finding and indicting on this, have been charged with, uh, were committed in a similar similar manner by crushing the left side of the head, removing body parts, and later dumping the deceased near their homes or nearby drinking place. Near their homes? Yeah, Ooh. so like oh. near near the compound that they would have come from. Not oh, okay. necessarily gotcha. their house, you know. Okay. Um, or nearby a drinking place. So what she means is like a bar that would have been considered a drinking place. Okay. Um, in all the incidences, a stone was found nearby the deceased's body. So for the most part, the body looks like it was discarded where they would have been killed. You know what I mean? They just left mm. it there. They just mm. killed them and left them there. With the amount of blood it looked like, they just left them there. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so obviously with such brutal murders taking place, the police and all of Lusaka wanted this murder to be found and for these killings to stop as soon as possible. The chaos from it actually caused riots and even a witch hunt to get all of it to stop because soon the Zambian public started to distrust the police and their ability to solve a crime mm, like this. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, um, the witch hunt started by rumors being spread that it was actually Rwandans who were responsible for the murders and that they had carried them out believing that the witchcraft would act as a charm and ensure better business in their Lusaka shops. Ooh, so this dang. was this idea of like point at the other, blame the other. Right. Which uh, Rwandans is the largest population of immigrants in Zambia. Um, that is also like fellow African immigrants uh, because of the Rwanda genocide and stuff like that. Mm. And this is the first time we'd ever seen anybody kind of like act out upon that type of thing or like a ty- type of like xenophobic yeah. thing. Right. So it was really hard to see that. <clears throat> and um, they, in Zambia, like there's a lot of people that are very superstitious. And I won't say like everybody is like that, but because of the high intensity of this situation, the superstition really got the best of the public. So um, in response to these rumors, angry mobs of Zambians looted and destroyed roughly 60 Rwandan-owned businesses in the city. Holy! Oh my gosh! Yeah, and this witch hunt actually caused a lot more harm, even more death. Um, This police spokeswoman spokeswoman that uh, explained earlier about, like, the way that the people had been murdered said 
that actually two <coughs> Zambian nationals were burned alive with tires and firewood during oh, these holy. riots. Which is, okay, hold up. So, <laughs> why are we repaying violence with a violence? Right. Yeah. Because it's great, not... Great question. And, you know, I get... I understand, like, this is the first time this community has faced a serial killer, like, almost movie-type situation. Mm-hmm. Plus, like you said, xenophobia. Yeah. Almost like this genocide thing going on. But still, how are you helping it by repaying yeah. it with violence? Yeah, it was really sad. So, uh, Home Affairs Minister Davies Mwala said they were mixed up in the confusion of the riots and they were likely mistaken for Rwandans, a small population of whom have lived in Zambia since they fled the genocide in 1994. That's uh, Muganga, who's the um, police spokeswoman, insisted that Rwandans shouldn't be blamed for the murders and stressed that the riots were based on faulty information. She said no baby or human body parts were found in any fridge belonging to any foreign national. Baby? Yeah, baby. so there were claims that... Because we don't fully know who all was killed, mm-hmm. but one of the one of the um, people that was killed <coughs> in these crimes was a woman who had a small child that was never found. The baby was never found. So that's kind of when it all escalated out of proportion. Because they're like, you killed this woman. This was the first non-homeless person killed. Mm-hmm. Um, you killed this woman. She was on her way back home from work. No. She was like a single mother. She had a baby. And in Zambia, you know, you take your baby to work with you, you take your children to work with you if you have to. Oh. So she had her work, she had her child with her. And so the no. baby was never found and the mother was killed. So they were obviously like, okay, where's this baby at? And that's why she mentions the baby. Come and she said, these statements are coming from people with criminal minds to create alarm among the members of the public <coughs> and justify their criminality. So often what was happening was people that were already committing crimes, such as looting or robbing, they would cover up the fact that they were looting <coughs> or um, uh, committing a crime by by saying that they were doing it because they believed that the Ra- Rwandans were... Um, were the murderers in these ritual killings. So they were covering, co- trying to cover up their own crime by getting other people to do it with them. Wow. So, like, they'd be caught stealing, and they'd decide, oh, oh, I'm, I'm stealing from this person because they're this, and they are potentially the people that killed them. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So that's kind of where that stemmed from. Because that's, that's logic. That makes yeah. so much sense. So at this point, the police had arrested more than 250 people complicit in the riots and um, those that had continued to spread rumors about the ritualistic murders, they were arrested, too. Um, so were, even for spreading rumors, people were people, being arrested. Well, not re- not just spreading rumors, but they were causing violence. Right. Like, they were... Like, per- like perpetuating. Yeah, they were bit. doing bad things. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So, was um, like, like, talking to someone on the street and be like, so I heard this. Yeah, like, not that. <laughs> this not, is the police. Not that <laughs> This is the police. But, like, but if you were, if you were in the middle of, of, like, a riot and you were inciting it, you were going to oh, okay. be... Yeah, you yeah. Were gonna that be, makes, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Arrested for it. And another 11 people were arrested on suspicion of involvement in the killings that sparked the riots to begin with. Mm. So the police kind of, <coughs> it was it was a mess. Basically, the police had to arrest both people involved with the riots and inciting the riots. But they also had to arrest people that were claiming that those people were involved with the crimes. So it was a mess. You know what I mean? That's so crazy. And then it's like, how do you help yourself narrow down who the actual, like, perpetrators are if everyone's just like, oh, I'm just going to go do things I shouldn't do. Everybody like, killing everybody. Like, that's not that's helping crazy. anything. It wasn't helping. I feel so bad for law enforcement. It was it was bad. I felt really bad for this. I feel too. bad because, like, this is something that's never happened before. They're trying their best. They're yes. really, They're really they trying really their best. Do be and, trying. and keep in mind, they solved this case. They right. find the people that did this. We stand. So but They could have done it so much quicker. If yeah, had just well, been and they found them really quickly. Like, these men were indicted in May of 2016. Ooh. So, they, like, they were found really quick. Anyways, we'll get to that. Yep. <laughs> so, um... Sorry, jumping the gun there. That's so, Ch- uh, Charity Muganga, who's the police spokeswoman, who, uh, as far as I could tell, sounds like a queen, so I'm excited <laughs> that she is the police spokeswoman. Well, she says, uh, we are appealing to the members of the public not to believe any statement they see on social media, which is not confirmed by the police. Because another way that the, these rumors were being spread was through social media. Mm. Okay. Um... 
So, 12 suspects in all were arrested, and it was eventually uh, whittled down to four suspects that were charged with the seven counts of murder. And these like were the original? With the murders. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, these were the men that ended up being convicted of this crime. So, the four spe- suspects are two army soldiers, a Zambian Air Force civilian employee. Are these and, all Zambian people? Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. And a traditional doctor. Mm. So that's the medical so that's the doctor. Expert. That's okay. how Gosh, it was. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, if you think about it, the way that the way that the heart had been removed, and the way that other things had been cut off, it was like they had the tools to do it. It was not hacked out. You know what I mean? It was like removed. The surgically. Shrink I, has a question. question. Yes. Did you say like on all of like the seven bodies that they found, like the left side of yes, the head was they smashed? Always in? did the left side. Always the left side. Oh, that is interesting. So why yeah. because because the left side of your brain is the detail oriented, like high motor skill. Like if that was the first thing they did to like incapacitate these people, they're out. They're done. Yeah. That's so intentional and I hate it. Yeah. So clearly the doctor had some knowledge, medical knowledge. Yeah. What? To help no. do this. And the army soldiers, I'm assuming, I'm not exactly sure why they were involved, but they were, and then an Air Force employee. Well, um, obviously they know how to take someone down. Yeah, they know so how to, there's that. They know how to take someone down. And it also makes sense because if if anyone has any type of like form of weaponry, like guns or anything, they normally have to be involved with military mm. because not that many Ooh. people own guns or weapons in, in Zambia. So if they were to, say, hold someone at gunpoint, like don't move, don't do anything, they more than likely would be either a police officer or somebody in the military that already has access to weapons. Mm. Mm-hmm. So Okay. Um, so they were arrested and jointly charged with seven counts of murder, which happened in Lusaka between the days of March 16th and March 17th in 2016. The four were identified as Luxieme, Louis, Boyat, Chris- Christopher Casapo, and Elvis Nyanga. So that's fun. One of the names was Elvis. Great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Elvis. So we all, I always knew Elvis was still alive. So yeah, they were convicted of these crimes in May. Um, and so that marks these these murders as solved. But throughout the case, the body parts of the victims that were cut off were never found. And the four mm. men never explained why they decided to murder in this way. What? Uh, which overall, honestly, still f- leaves a very, like, icky feeling about this case, even though it is technically solved. It's like, it would be solved, but, like, that would leave people feeling so uneasy to know, like, yeah. their parts are still yeah. somewhere. We right. Don't and know th- we don't know. Because they won't tell They won't the tell, the tell, police. tell them. And... Basically, they didn't need to get confirmation from them because they had forensic confirmation. They had witness testimonies that corroborated that, yes, we saw these four men in this place at this time. You know, So it was like there was a lot of things coming together that made sense that these four men were the ones who did it. Okay. And like I said, the doctor thing is well tied it in as well. Mm. Um, so they didn't... Um, there is no published testimony of guilt... From them, and I don't know if they pled guilty or not. Um, and even if e- even if they did plead guilty, sometimes people do that just to get a lighter sentence. Right. You know, even here in the states, it's like, well, I'm screwed. But like, if I admit to this, then I'm less screwed. Yeah. Then I'll get a less less lesser sentence. So, um, yeah, that is that case. Holy cow! <laughs> That's a lot. Okay, but here's my. I have a thought. Yeah, I just my sorry, <laughs> just clawed me. The left Socks are in and is too crazy. She can't sit still. <laughs> um, so none of them out of these, what you said, four people, four people, four people, explained why they did what they did. Mm-hmm. That makes me so frustrated because I I need closure. Yeah, it makes me really frustrated too. There's no testimony of guilt or um or any type of like. Thing, like what we've dealt with with like Matthew J. Hoffman where he listed off like how he did it and why he did it and blah blah blah. Mm, right. There's none of that in this case. Um, basically they just have the evidence that proves that they were the ones that did it and um, I think they had a little bit of information from one of the guys that explained like how they found people, like how they would find people but um, other than that there's very little <laughs> known about what the men actually said because um 
I think for one, they probably did that to protect the families of the the mm. um, people that um, are the murderers mm-hmm. because it could have easily gotten out of hand, as we mm. saw earlier. That's mm-hmm. true. And their families could have been very, very badly damaged. So their names, for the most part, were kept very clear of the media. This was, I only found one article that actually named who they were. So, um... Their families or the men themselves? The the men who killed them. None of the victims are given by name. And that is a very, um, common thing when it, when it is people that are homeless, you don't ever find out who they are. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I think maybe one of them ended up being identified, but other than that, I don't think the rest were ever end up to be identified. Because... Um, either they didn't have identification on them because they couldn't afford to get identification papers or, you know, um, like any type of cards or anything like a driver's license or anything like that, or it had been stolen off of them by maybe somebody else, maybe mm-hmm. not necessarily the murderers. So, um, yeah, that's that's where that case is. And it's, you know, it's it's it's... <coughs> awesome to see that this was solved and I remember all of this happening when I was in Zambia and just being like what the heck is going on this is crazy I've never seen anything like this Mm -hmm. in Zambia Um, so it's really awesome to see that the police did solve this but um, yeah it's (laughs) it's wild it's a wild case so and so okay this is 2016 right yeah thank you Kat um Anyway, (laughs) Um, so you were there in Zambia still, and your brother was still there, but Mm -hmm. your sister had since gone to... Lindsay had moved to America in 2015. So she's she's here while all of this is happening. Were you, like, talking to her about this at all? Fairly certain we had to have mentioned it to her. You had to have been, yeah. Yeah, I'm fairly certain we talked to her about her, because I remember the main people I would talk to it about, because we have um, a family that lives with us um, in the same, like, on the same property Mm -hmm. that is a local Zambian family, and I remember talking to every, when, when you have people that you respect and they are older than you, you always call them uncle or auntie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Uncle Clement, I remember talking to him about this case because he would be the one who would tell me and my mom and everything, like, what's going on with this with with this thing? Because, like, right. we didn't have TV, so we didn't, like, like watch the news or whatever. Um, so I just remember hearing about it from him. And then in Zambia, when you are driving out on the road, people are... Um, standing by carrying newspapers and selling them to you while you're in your while you're in your vehicle, so you can just pass the money and buy them while you're driving. Mm-hmm. And so you'll drive past and you'll see the headlines. And so I remember driving past and seeing the headlines of like seven, uh, you know, the new total of these ritual killings, like seven. I remember seeing article headlines dealing with these cases. So like everything around you. As far as people, what people were talking about and the headlines in the news and all of that stuff was dealing with this case. So this was a huge deal in Lusaka. We had, right. Like I said, we had never <clears throat> seen anything like this. And, yeah, and I remember when they found them, everybody was just like, this is crazy. You know, like, when they found the, the guys that did it, right. so... Like to your to your knowledge, though, like has anything like this happened since? No. So as far as I know, nothing has happened like this since. And like I said, this is not something that often happens. Like there's there's murder and there's killings and stuff like that, but it's always um, very easily explainable. Mm-hmm. Like it'll be like this guy was shot by this guy because of because Go of a business prison. grievance yeah. or something right. or a, a love or lovers quarrel or something like that. Something it's very easy, easy to dis, to understand well, it. Easy. And yeah. Right. E- easy in the way yeah. of like it's easy to be like okay this was the motive. Mm-hmm. With this we have no idea what the motive is. It it could be ritual killings. Right. It could just be weird experimentations like it could be anything. Right. Like I was going to ask like they were ruled to be ritual killings yeah. but like for what? Yeah, for what ritual? We don't know. We don't know if this if this was potentially black market stuff, mm. where this man is getting hearts to sell on the black market. We don't know, and he's just disguising it by cutting off other body parts to disguise it as um, potentially something else rather than black market stuff, because that stuff Except happens all the time. One of the things that stands out to me with that, too, is, though, like, and it totally could be, but... There was genital mutilation, yeah. which usually, 
I, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, mm. but shows that there's some, like, there's a very, it's different than just, like, I'm cutting off body parts to make it look like I'm just selling stuff. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, that's there's like some sexual, malice there. Yeah. That's, yeah. like, sexual, like, not, what's the word for it? Like, they talk about it in Corona Minds all the time. Like, there was a sexual component to mm-hmm. their killing. Like, they cut yeah. off their genitals, or, like, they rape the corpse or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's very, like, violent. Yeah. Too. So there's just this... Uh, this malice in the killings that I'm like, wow. And the fact that they did it in every one, too. Yeah. Remind me, how far away were you living from this place? From Ngombe, which I remember the lady that was killed and her baby was not found, was ten minutes away from my house. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And that so was... So this is, like, local, local. This was very this was local. Like very close and to And I home. remember... Next door to home. The, the <laughs> other one that I remember was, I think, the seventh one, because I think it was the last one, and everyone was just like, this is crazy. Because I remember Uncle Clement coming into our house and being like, well, they found somebody else. And, you know, we were just like, what? This is... Like, how is this continually happening? Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. It was just disbelief. And that person was found... I, I believe up by Great East Road, which was about 30 to 20 minutes away from our house, where they were found, and they were found out by a public market. Ooh. So this was, like, getting more and more public, not not hidden, you know what I mean? And, like, risky. Just very bold. Yeah. yeah. They got really, really bold. And like, like uh, Charity said, um, the police spokeswoman... Every single murder, they found the murder weapon right beside them, with or at least the the weapon that incapacitated them, mm-hmm. which was a huge boulder rock thing that they used to hit them over the head with on the left side of the head. They like bashed their head in on the left side. It's so interesting to me to know that the do- like the doctor would know to like okay, I gotta hit their left side if I want them to. Like but it's experience like seats functioning. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's, it's like experience. that experience, that knowledge. Like you said, he's a doctor; he knows. Yeah, it's experience. Ugh. It's the tools that were being used to, like, like I said, these were the heart was not hacked out of this person's body. This was like a heart that was surgically removed, right? Like skillfully, and that's why a lot of people <laughs> believe the idea of it being sold on the black market, even if there were was a different type of aspect to the murder. Um, it could have still been sold to the black market because that is a money maker. And so if they were just hacking it out, you obviously couldn't do that. But if you were surgically removing it and it was, you know, well kept and put on ice, then they could use it. That's true. Theoretically. So there, yeah, there's a lot of different angles to this case and it's a crazy one and it's a really interesting one and and anytime you're dealing with crime kind of in a third world country, it's really hard to understand kind of what goes on behind the scenes that we don't see. Mm -hmm. Um, So I definitely know I don't know all the details of the case because it is just less open there and so they're they're willing to give you less information than how we do here in America where we're very open when someone is killed and right. the murder is found, like, we put out a bunch of information about that person. names left and right. Yeah. Right. Whereas with this, it's a lot more hidden because it's just, it's, it's, it's just different. Mm-hmm. And so, right. um, yeah, but that's what I remember from that case, and uh, the other information was what I got from different articles that were written about the case. Um, so, yeah, that's my case on the African <sighs> serial killers. That's Gosh. so crazy. Yeah. The, just... The, you have the seven like killings that were like directly caused by these. And I will four say, guys. there's a potential other victims. They just they have not they been able to forensically right, tie right. them to them. But like, let's say okay, there, you have the original murders mm-hmm. done by the four men, but then you have like all the reciprocal death that came from it because of all these riots right. and like the protests. The witch that were hunt caused. is crazy. Mm-hmm. Bonkers, bro. Yeah, totally bonkers. Yeah. I sounded like a surfer dude. I'm not. Bonkers, bro. It's totally bonkers, totally bro. bonkers. So thank you so much for listening to episode five. If you have any questions about this case, you know, um, shoot us a comment here. Tweet on, us, bro. Tweet, Come on. Tweet at us. Put a comment on YouTube, on Instagram. Make sure to follow our socials. We've got a TikTok. So we do have for, that. You can see the the lips. Yeah, you can see the lips. Go go follow us there. Um, and yeah, come back for next week's episode. I believe. 
Joe LB. It's a it's a me. It is and a this time I will cue the entrance correctly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so LB will have a new case for us next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. But the, as for right now, this is Glenn <laughs> and, and friends. <laughs>